Hey there, everyone. How's it going today in the stream? We are bringing you the Duelist Dev Talk Episode 2, where we brought in a couple of artists, and we are going to answer your questions about, uh, well, art, and uh, what makes Duelist look so great. I'm going to be the host here today. I'm Umbrella with customer support and design, and I will let these fantastic guys introduce themselves. Uh, hello, <laughs> I'm Glauber. Uh, I, well, my, jo my job description is pretty weird here, but uh, I'm kind of the pixel art lead guy <laughs> <laughs> and uh, character designer for Duelist. I'm Adam. Uh, I'm my job description, I think, is pretty straightforward. I just animate characters. I do, uh, yeah, just character animation. Um, and some spell effects animation, too. I always, uh, I never know what to tell people your job description is, Glopper. I, I usually say, like, <laughs> Yeah, that's right. I'm sort of like a director. Yeah, but uh, Duelist is not, like, entirely pixel art, so... That's why I don't I don't like to call myself like the art director. Because <laughs> <laughs> yes. that's that's too much, you know, that's too much responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, most of the Pixar art is like um, it's pretty much uh, everything me for uh, the at least for the creation process, like cre creating all all um, not only uh, characters, the units you see in the game, but uh, the icons and spells and artifacts. And um, yeah, pretty much it. And then uh, we have Adam and a couple more uh, animators, uh, like um, Nate, which is uh, Adam's brother's brother, and uh, Raphael, and uh, uh, What's his call again? <laughs> I remember his nickname, like <laughs> Jerry Fly. Yeah, yeah, it's Ryan. Ryan. Yeah, right, right. right, right. Because we have like three Ryans on the team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, we have animators like animate the characters and then the icons and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty big uh, team for uh, only for only the pixel art process because we have people doing like the interface, the artwork, etc. Yeah, uh, for an indie game, I don't know. I'm sure there are other indie games that use this many like pixel artists, but uh, they're pretty rare to have so many people like working together on one project. Yeah, especially like uh, because pixel art is mostly used on indie games nowadays, and um, and indie uh, teams used to be like pretty small. So I think uh, one or two max. So I think I think that might be a good place to open up with a question uh, for me. Uh, we we do have some other questions lined up as well. But what made you guys become pixel artists, or or do you identify primarily as pixel artists? Because I know for me personally, just growing up on all of these older games, it's just a style that I just think looks fantastic and just brings me like great joy. I'm curious, what made you guys pixel artists? Um, I I always liked to draw, like uh, when I was a kid. Because uh, my mother uh, used to draw for a hobby, like uh, a paint, on, on not on canvas, but uh, yeah, on canvas and yeah, paper too. And then I uh, kind of uh, was drawn to it. Drawn to it? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so I, I always, I was the, the drawing kid in the school, you know. So uh, when I uh, first had a computer at home, like my, my dad brought like this really uh, cheap computer at home and we had uh, Windows 3, you know, like uh, when we have like the, 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 the really old Windows, I'm not sure if everyone remembers it, but uh, it had like Microsoft Paint and it was uh, like a drawing tool, like um, a very old drawing tool. And I used to like draw there because it was like a fancy tool because it was new too, and uh, computers, oh my god, it's the future, and I'm drawing on the screen, etc. And uh, eventually, I discovered that uh, uh, everything, all the graphics on, 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 not only on games, but uh, the Windows itself, it's all made of pixels. It's it's all, like I, I of course, I, I didn't know it was called pixel art, but um, 
uh, that was my first experience with pixel art. And then I just like grew up trying to um, uh, do stuff on, on, on paint. And then we, when we had uh, internet, I began like uh, researching about it and, and trying to find if someone else was doing it too, like, you know, drawing things on paint. And then uh, I discovered these uh, communities who were doing like pixel art online and uh, posting stuff. And that's when I, uh, I discovered, I, at first I, I used to, to, to go into um, some forums about uh, about Mega Man, which they created their own uh, characters on pixel art, and then uh, eventually I bumped into like stuff like uh, Pixelation, which is a pretty big pixel art community and uh, pretty old too. Like it's more than ten years, I think, old, and uh, that's when I really became attached uh, to to pixel art. Like I uh, really, really. Um, recurrent uh, hobby for me. Yeah, um, my story is a little bit different than Globbers in that I was terrible at drawing. Like I was not the drawing. <laughs> it's a up. sad story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really depressing. Me and my brother were just looking at <laughs> drawings that we had like in our basement. And uh, my drawings are just so awful. It looks like a crazy maniac scribbled on a piece of paper. Uh, and then, um, <laughs> so what got me into pixel art is, uh, I have two older brothers. So one's Nate, he works at, he works on Duelist as well. He does character animation. And then the other one is a, a programmer and he, uh, he programs games. So they were making this game called, uh, Broken Knuckles, which was like a double dragon sort of style game. And I like really wanted to do art, like make art and put it in their game. So I would go on MS Paint and, uh, draw all these characters uh, but usually, like, they were terrible, and they called them... There was one that they called Noodle Arms, and I would, like, cry because I was 11, and it was... Like, <laughs> <laughs> it was oh, my me. God. It was terrible. Um, yeah, and then I found uh, the pixelation forums, like, Lobber. I don't know if I was on it at the same time as you were. I don't remember. Oh, I'm not sure. I, I, I don't even remember which like year. 2009, 2010 or something like that. Yeah, around then. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, and I um, learned from a lot of people on there. And then there's another website called Pixel Joint uh, that I just, like, kept posting up artwork and getting critique on it. Um, and, yeah, I took up some, like, small commission jobs, just, like, random games that nobody's ever heard of. Uh, and then Duelist was like the only like actual game that I've worked on. Um, yeah, but I'm I was inspired by like games like Mega Man, uh, Link to the Past, Zelda, just Super Nintendo era sort of games. Fantastic. Uh, did you did you uh, use to uh, like? Not rip, but try to download some stuff like from from games and try to. Uh, emulate or, or or even like you know imitate like because I, I I mostly when I started I I like I started because not only because of a Mega Man because of Pokemon too like I, I was playing like a lot of Pokemon and then and they had like oh my god 150 Pokemon <laughs> how did they they do it like uh, they draw uh, so many creatures with uh, just a few squares and uh, that's what that's still my uh, modus operandi for learning, you know, like seeing stuff, even like old stuff, like um, I don't know, uh, uh, Minish Cap, which is, uh, which, is oh, which has gorgeous, gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, beautiful grass, and, um, <laughs> metal look too, like stuff like stuff that. that, even even newer stuff like um, Super Time Force or yeah. uh, Owl Boy. Oh, no. Hellboy's so good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so we're going to continue to answer questions about art, but we were actually going to screen share so you can see some of some of this art in progress. So this might be a good time to get that transition going. And that that sort of as we're transitioning that screen, that feeds into a question that I'm sure we're going to see a lot of, but we've already seen in chat, which is, what do you guys use when you make these? Uh, 
pixel animations and just like concept out arts. I think you can see now there's a program on the screen, but uh, if you could talk a little bit more about what programs you guys use or what your workflow is like. Uh, I use mostly Photoshop uh, because it's it's not really meant for, for pixel art. Like I think there are uh, more recent stuff, uh, which is way better to, to uh, and even for beginners, which is uh, also, more accessible because Photoshop is not cheap. <laughs> but uh, because I, I work on, uh, I don't I don't work just on Duelist. I have like other projects, and Photoshop is really handy for all situations. So I I it's it's worth uh, it's worth paying for me. So I use it for for Duelist to uh, for Duelist and and either uh, in any. Pixel art I do I do on, on Photoshop because I kind of uh, learned how to do my uh, usual workflow on Photoshop. So you can see like I have a bunch of windows uh, open uh, at the same time, like a, a reference sheet I use for characters and a, a miniature to to check if the, the pixel art is is uh, uh, turning out good for for the game. And uh, like the layer system, which is very handy. The color palette and the color mixer, like uh, even the you know stuff like basic stuff like uh, the history. Well, my interface is not in English, by the way. <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, my 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 native uh, language is not English. I I you probably noticed because it's it's trash. But uh, <laughs> I'm sorry about that, by the way. But um, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I use yeah. I use mostly Photoshop to to do stuff here. There's also something I use when I do animation, which is the timeline, which has a frame by frame. Oops. Spoilers. <laughs> oh my god. And uh, what I usually do to uh, keep track of all the characters I've been creating so far. So I have uh, like some kind of reference sheet. Uh, I have one for uh, the, the the recent ones and all and one for a separate file which shows like all the units I've done so far, uh, I'm not sure if you're seeing that, but uh, I'm doing a, a, right now. I'm doing a vendor, a new vendor unit, and uh, I like to have like all vendor units open at the same time. Uh, so not only I can see if it uh, if it's like lined up in the vendor art style, like blue eyes, uh, black and cyan, you know this stuff, but also to check if uh, if this new character has uh, enough uniqueness to to it to to look like uh, different enough in the game, so you don't confuse like two units of the same uh, faction, uh, thinking it's another. You know, like um, there's a, there's also there's a also game a design game. reason to to do different uh, poses and, and silhouettes. And uh, color combinations, even though like uh, each faction has uh, its own palette, you know, like uh, we all know, like Vitruvian is it's, it's mostly yellow and, and brown, and uh, Abyssian is purple, Magma is green, and a bit of orange, and uh, Venner is all blue and white. Uh, we gotta make sure uh, two units don't look exactly, not exactly the same, but too much of the same, you know. Yeah, I think so, that's something. Uh, I think that's something that uh, that really reads well in Duelist, but is something you might not know unless you're thinking about how the art is made. Is part of why every unit, every minion feels so awesome is because they're all so distinct and different. And like you, you get the feel that there's this huge cast of interesting characters playing around on the field, but you never really think like you, you got, the artists actually put time into like lining them up and making sure everyone has like a strong silhouette and like at a glance, you know exactly what's cool about it. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, now you know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I kind of jumped myself into, into the question uh, about uh, the program. So uh, Adam, if you want to yeah. talk more about the animation process. Talk so about uh, MS Paint and why it's. <laughs> <laughs> anymore. Um, I use. Uh, uh, graphic scale. It's a free program that, well, actually, it's free 
to like use, but then um, to save any gifts, you have to buy it, but it's like $20 or something. And gifts are what has animation, so obviously you need that. But uh, yeah, it, I like it because it's simple and I know like everything about it mostly. Um, a lot of times it does weird stuff where like it doesn't let you control Z, like undo uh, strokes, and that can mess you up. But for the most part, it works pretty well and it's pretty straightforward. Glowing it's reviews. A, it's a pretty old. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a pretty, <laughs> it's, it's a pretty old program too. That's why uh, I'm not sure if they like up, update. Yeah, they something. don't. <laughs> <laughs> they definitely don't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the next question. Now that we know where the magic happens, uh, how long does it take you to make something? I guess probably you can break it down into parts and then give a big picture, but in general, how long does it take for a minion to come into creation? Um, one minion, let's say, uh, like, I, I usually, uh, it takes me usually one, one, no, two to three hours, but I, uh, th that's only the drawing process. Like, I like to spend more time. Like, I have, I like to at least have one day for each character. So, like, when I woke up, when I wake up, and uh, I don't know, when I'm at the shower <laughs> eating, you know, I'm, I'm still thinking about the character. And then when I finally come to to draw it, I know what I exactly what I have to do to to make it uh, unique. And um, uh and you know and usually i have like a, a, a visual key like a, a keith uh he, he helps me with uh with this part with the creation at, at the beginning he always has these like visual ideas and references like for this unit he had like this idea for like a really armored and a really big cape uh banner unit so i started to to get more references uh like that so it's not like a direct copy of this one <laughs> and uh, i started to think about it and how to mix things and how to like uh in this case like how to apply uh vanner colors and vanner elements like ice or you know they have they usually have a lot of cloth too like because it's cold you know cold weather and um and then so it's not really just two three hours on drawing there's like a lot of uh thought process behind to like before even like opening photoshop so uh, i i'd say like at least at least four to five hours only to creating the first the first look like the first sprite so i can hand them to animators and then yeah so so after you put five six seven hours into this then it's done right there's no extra step it's just everything <laughs> yeah sometimes <laughs> yeah and then the magic it's animated too it's coming to life <laughs> then you just move the the art just your yeah hands. yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah but usually there's there's no uh there's little like you know revisions to it like oh it's too big it's too small something like that and uh but that's pretty much it then I hate to animators. And what do the animators do, Adam? Let's hear yeah. it. <laughs> so uh, the first thing that, you, that at least I do is whenever you take it, I have a question for Glover here, actually, real quick. Um, so the first thing that I always have to do is take the image and then separate it into layers and get like the arm and the leg apart from each other and stuff like that. Do you draw it already with it separated into layers? Am I doing it? Um, uh, usually, no. but. Uh, only if it's like a really, really, really big yeah. uh, unit, like let's say Dreadnought, you know, the Magmar one. I think you even made it that one. Yeah, I did. Uh, that was really big and a lot of stuff like like uh, wings and spikes and uh, <laughs> and it's four legs and uh, like even like I think I even separated the the jaw and the from the head, you know, because it's so big. But uh, like here, I I usually just separate the head and and the body and like extra elements. Like uh, I have a layer for effects eventually, like a aura or electricity, fire, like something like that. But it's usually related to my process. So I like to separate head because head is a really tricky thing to 
to get because had um, uh, for viewers, for players, uh, for anyone that's uh, watching an animation, the first thing that it's uh, someone will look into is the head because they identify it and so they know what's happening to the rest of the body, you know. So uh, that's that's uh, uh, like theory, uh, even on, on like animations and stuff. So um, uh, that's I try to nail. That's exactly what I'm not doing here right now, <laughs> but uh, because that's that's a really uh, unique case. But usually I do the, the head. Like uh, I I know like if it's a magma unit, I do all the horns and teeth and the eye. And then I just I, I go to the next layer, which is the body. So uh, you know I can turn on and off. Like if if I just want to see the body, if it's uh, okay, the right proportions, and uh, like uh, I don't know, or stuff that 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 I I'm gonna change. But uh, like stuff I don't want to change anymore. So I like uh, if I have the body ready and I want to do like a weapon, a sword, I create a new layer and start drawing there so I don't lose, so I don't mess up with the body, you know, so I can like freely draw stuff here, like a sword. And then, okay, the let's say that the sword is ready, but I want to add effects. So I do another effects layer and then have like, I don't know, energy coming out from the blade. So if it's not cool, I can uh, erase, so I don't mess with the layers, the other layers that, that are already done, you know, um, but uh, 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 yeah, yeah. I usually don't use too many layers. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, the first thing that I do usually I have like ten layers or something like that. So I definitely separate way more than whenever you just initially create the sprite. But uh, then there's six animations that that each character has to have. So there's attack, idle, run, and death. And then there's hit, which is like pretty similar to death, but it's only like three frames. And then breathing, which is um, the animation that plays whenever they're just on the board and they're not like you didn't select them. And that's like idle, but toned down uh, for large characters. So like Zareel or Grandmaster Zendo or something, they can take up to. Uh, well, I think I'm a little faster now, but those guys took like 30 hours. Um, I think I could do them in about 20 now. And normal characters take about ten or twelve, just uh, about like normal size characters. The attack animation wow, usually takes half the time. About so if it's like a twelve-hour total animation, the attack animation takes about six of that. And then I can do idle, death, and run, and uh, the rest in that same time. You know, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, it took thirty hours. I haven't done a 30-hour character. The generals take 30 hours, that's for sure. Like the Mark II, they took really long. Yeah. I haven't yeah, done a 30-hour right. animation in a long time. Usually I'm mm. faster now. And that, that gets even more impressive when you think about how many people we said the art team has and how many new minions are coming out. Yeah. <laughs> it adds up very quickly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's see. Um, we got a lot of good questions already. What are the challenges of doing pixel art versus other styles? And we kind of already talked about the advantages, right? Where it's it has this uh, this simple aesthetic that you can really master for, especially that's popular for indie developers. So, what are what are some of the challenges of pixel art? What makes it different from doing other art? Um. Uh, well. But Wait, uh, did you you want to know the the easy or the the hard part first? <laughs> um, I, I think I heard both. <laughs> I think I think the hard part is more interesting. I think I think people okay. kind of understand uh, the advantages. So let's yeah, let's focus on the what what's what's the challenge with doing pixel art. Uh, I think uh, the first thing that comes in mind that I usually run into uh, in most of the projects I, I work on, it's always, always, always uh, technical. And it's, it's very technical, and it's about resolution. Because um, uh, pixel art is not, is not easily resizable, you know? Like, if you want to, let's say, these, these, uh, this, this, let's say this character is ready. So uh, if you want to 
uh, make it bigger on a bigger screen, like um, a different resolution. Let's say if you want to make it bigger, so you can't use like you you have to work with exact amount of uh, uh, of uh, resize resize uh, scaling. Yeah, scaling. So um, you can't just you know make things one and a half bigger because it it's gonna ruin all the pixels you've done till now. So <laughs> let's see. Yeah, this is this is gonna be like uh, one and a half bigger. So you, you can see like, if you start to, to resize the whole thing, it doesn't know where to put like half pixel. So it starts uh, calculating uh, the, the, the place and the size of each pixels really, really like in a really, messy way if you and if you try to like filter things like use an anti alliance it's gonna ruin all your pixels it's gonna be it's not gonna be pixel art anymore you know so it's all blurry uh, you can't uh, properly work anymore so you have to resize like into two or three or four, five times bigger so and that's that's not really flexible because uh, if you want to say uh, if you want show your graphics in a just a little bigger resolution you can't because that's not how pixel art works and that's really the, the and that's the problem with uh not only on computer like we have different resolutions uh for all uh, for monitors but uh if you're working with mobile it's even like <laughs> it's even more chaotic like there's there's a a ton of of of, of uh of devices and, and resolutions and versions and you gotta worry about the old ones and then the, the the newer ones you know like it's really difficult to nail the right size uh and then you have like different uh, uh spec ratios <sighs> it's it's really really hard in every project i work at that that was that was a, a thing even in duelist like when you we added the full screen thing uh we have a, a mode that doesn't uh, uh, distort the pixel art, just you know, make the the camera bigger, so you know, so you see more of the the, the background. But uh, there's a mode you you we just um, resize the pixel art and deal with it, <laughs> you know, because <laughs> yeah. people because some people still uh, like it, so it's okay, it's okay. Absolutely, and especially layer that on top of like we're going to be on mobile soon. It's just got so many yes. different displays that. Oh my god! <laughs> that has to be a nightmare. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'd say the hardest part, or the most frustrating part for me, is uh, in terms of animating pixel art. Whenever you uh, have, so like, if I have an animation that's fleshed out, it's basically done. Except I have to it's a lot of just moving around pixels. It's because the pixels get messy as you like rotate them and grab them and move them. That half the work is just like not even creating new content, but just making sure that it doesn't look incredibly messy and with like pixels all over the place. Um, but with like normal animating, you don't have, you have different problems, but it's not quite the same um, where it's like everything just gets incredibly messy and you spend the whole time just pushing around pixels. Uh, and not actually animating. So that's probably my biggest gripe with pixel art. Mm -hmm. I think on that note, we are going to transition screens now and take a look at some animation from Adam Kling's perspective instead. Um, while we're transitioning, I want to knock out, we'll do kind of like a neutral question, but I want to knock out really quickly. Uh, when are we going to flip Crystal Cloaker? Crystal Cloaker isn't backwards, your eyes are backwards. Uh, so delete that question from the list. Crystal Cloaker is is the little beetle guy that a lot of people seem to interpret as facing the other way. Really? But their their yeah. eyes are actually just wrong. <laughs> so, yeah. But... <laughs> I haven't. <laughs> That's funny. I've never heard it's, of that. Yeah, it's really interesting. There's a there are a few. Well, I, that might be the main one, but there's also uh, sometimes people aren't sure which way Night Sorrow Assassins facing either, but. It's it's clear when it moves, when it's standing still, it's like in a very neutral pose. So I think the the sort of neutral tone question I want to ask is just what is whatever what are your guys' favorite uh, things you've done 
for Duelist. Uh, I know like everyone has their own personal favorite minion. There's a minion that stands out to everyone. Or, or maybe you really like the spell effects instead. There's some fantastic spell effects. Uh, I tend to be a sucker for anything that's like a monster, like a chimera or like horror burster, very squiggly, both <laughs> great in concept and animation. So I'm curious, what are your guys' favorites? Uh, Is the question uh, of our own or of just in general all of Duelist? Of, oh, well, probably of Duelist, yeah. But okay. it can be your favorite for whatever reason you like it the most. Like maybe it was the most fun to work on. Maybe you just think it looks the best. Maybe you can't pick one and you have to pick a whole faction. <laughs> whatever <laughs> whatever works for you. Uh, that's... that's... That's a hard it's, one. <laughs> it's, yeah, it was definitely not an easy question. I I just listed two, and that was just off the top of my head. If I put more thought into it, you can ask me again in an hour. I'll have a different answer. There's just <laughs> too many good, too many good minions to pick just one. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, in a really, really, really personal way, my favorite unit is uh, how's it called? The Solarius? Is it Solarius? Right. Uh, uh, I, I usually don't remember because we change names uh, after we release them. Like uh, when I when I work on them, they usually have placeholder names. Yeah. But uh, Solaris is the the, the one, the, one. Uh, the draw two cards. Zio, right? Oh yes, yes, absolutely. Yes, Solaris. Yeah. That's my favorite one because uh, it was the first one uh, that I uh, worked, which was I think it was was not uh, vanilla. You know, like the from the core set. Mm -hmm. It was probably the first faction from any expansion. No, I'm lying. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I did the, the Seven Sister first. But uh, it was the first one I really put some... Um, I really wanted to focus on, on the creation process, you know, like... Because I was really dependent on, on Keith and uh, Chris to do, like, uh, a initial idea. Even, like, uh, the, the game design team, like, something like a stats or, or, or a, a tribe, or a, you know, uh, or a mechanic to to convey something on my head. So I, uh, Solarius was the first thing that I could come up like alone, uh, by my own, using by my own references and my own uh, uh, new method to to do like a, the, the the character creation, and the first one we. Which I was really, really proud of because it was like, it's not your usual Lioner character, you know? It's not like the, the armored guy, which is bulky, heavy armored, and, uh, you know, like uh, it has a sword or a very big uh, weapon or two weapons, like two shields. <laughs> and um, and it's it's kind of a, a, a mage, like inside Lioner. And it's not really, you can't tell if it's a, 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 if it's a dude or it's a girl. And uh, it's very neutral in that way. So it's very mysterious too. Um, you know, it's, it's, it was the first one that I really, really, uh, the, which I noticed, I, I you know, I, I've made progress on that matter, on, on, on creation. So, uh, so that is my, like, my favorite one on that matter. Uh, I would say mine is uh, Albi Sage, is, um, even though that's like one of the really old units. Uh, really? Whenever I, whenever I first joined the Duelist team, uh, I was like looking through, I was in like one of the beta or alpha things, and I was looking through all the gallery, and I had never seen all of Globber sprites before. I was like, these are amazing! And uh, but, like, <laughs> right? there's so many. Um, and that one was like the one that stuck out to me, where like I loved all his feathers and uh, his design and stuff. Um, so he's just my favorite from being, I guess, like uh, he was like my favorite back then. So I still, I still like him. He's got a special place in your heart. Yeah, <laughs> or, value. or I guess you could spin it the other way and say, based on Glover's answer, you don't feel like you've improved as an artist. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> 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 no, I, Owl Beast is definitely a fan favorite, and uh, it's a cool card that's just kind of, you know, things in Duelist change all the time, but Owl Beast has just kind of been there, buffing Arcanists, and that's pretty fantastic. Yeah, I remember, like, Owl Beast was the f it's probably the first one where, 
in which I had the idea of like animating feathers. I was like, oh, if I like do the feathers movie, it's gonna be like awesome. <laughs> you know, like you can. It's gonna be really organic. Because I have been doing like uh, just you know mechanical stuff like uh, Lionel and, and Song Guy or even like Megamar or or Ambition. With uh, I didn't animate oh just general just the the, the just Voth, but uh, it was like uh, all scales and and horns and spikes, so everything very stiff. So when I yeah. had a chance to, to work like on feathers, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and then you made Owl Beast Sage, and uh, the feather animation was so good. They made an entire game called Owl Boy based on Owl Beast. Sage. <laughs> <laughs> well, we we have Azrael, which is full feathers. Yeah. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Um, okay, so this what this is a question specifically for Adam, and it's a two part question. What okay. is the most difficult animation you've had to do, and how many consecutive push ups can you do? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, um, the uh, the hardest animation. There were a lot of times. So whenever it was like the first year that I was doing Duelist, and I'd have this little notebook by my desk where I like wrote uh, my time and stuff for how long I've been working on it, like each character, and uh, there was some display that. Duelist was going to, and Keith needed the obelisks finished, like all three of them in a week. And I was like, I okay, <laughs> even though that's three characters in one week when usually I do one character in one week. But the obelisks are pretty simple. Right. But I remember at that point, uh, I wrote in my notebook, like, I hate duelists or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Um, but it, the anger subsided, and yeah, I remember that just being really upset about, because I was having a hard time um, getting the animations to look like look right, and I, ha I actually had Nate do edits for me and uh, help me out with that one, so he saved me out a little bit. Uh, the other one that was really hard was uh, Mobius, uh, the figure eight, transforming into a robot oh, girl. Yeah. That, that, was that was so weird. So I got that design, and I was like, what is this thing? <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was really fun trying to figure out how this figure eight is going to turn into a uh, robot girl. But uh, yeah, it was really difficult. That was one of the hardest ones too. Yeah. Oh, well, what's the second part? Um, how many push-ups can I do? Mm -hmm. uh, I think 400. That's about... <laughs> Wow, maybe 30, 40. Like 400 so, yeah. in one year. <laughs> yeah, in one year. I think I've done 400 push ups, like total, lifetime total. <laughs> so yeah. I'm not sure if that's yeah. impressive or. Uh... Well, See, if, I, if, I, if, I, if I can like defend myself, uh, Mobius was not uh, my idea. It was, <laughs> it, was, <laughs> I, it was not my idea. <laughs> the brief, the briefing was already uh, said. So uh, okay, I, I was like that was too. Like okay, was that yeah. a Kickstarter? Uh, I think it's cool, but uh, okay. No, it's it's just a yes. I think it's it's a Keith original. I believe I might be mistaken, but I believe that was uh -huh. Keith's vision is like <laughs> to take this mathematical concept of a Mobius and transform into pixel art, which is. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, it turned I, out awesome, but I imagine it was very daunting at the front. I never know. I never know whose original idea is like it, it's. Sometimes it's it's uh, it's keys. Sometimes it's uh, it's uh, emails. Sometimes it's uh, Eric's. I know when it's Eric's. When it's pandas. Yeah. <laughs> oh, do a panda. Okay. <laughs> to say very rarely, very rarely, <laughs> it's now mine on the design team. When I was. I, when we're working on stuff, I think there's been like one time I'm like, oh, I have an idea for what this will look like. I'm gonna tell Keith. <laughs> <laughs> Which one did you did you uh, have an input? Uh, it's I, I think we showed it already. Um, it was actually it was actually uh, the the panda we showed for the next set. Oh, was the like, new one. Oh, cool. While we were, while we were working on it, while we were working on the new panda or the new card, I was like, oh, this would be awesome if it was a panda, and Eric will like it. So it, hilariously. That was that was the one where I had some vision. <laughs> <laughs> it turned out pretty fantastic. Uh, 
Thanks so all man. because of you. Yeah, all, all, all because, because of me. Of I did it all. <laughs> <laughs> If, if you see if you see a nice cool kindling work, panda Kevin. and it swings, you know, it has a sick attack animation and like a strong silhouette, it's all me because I thought, what if it was like a panda? <laughs> Genius. <laughs> Suddenly everyone had a creative strike and then oh my god yes it's genius <laughs> he's everyone's just sitting around this. tapping their yeah. it's gonna what are we have gonna do for this next character um, <laughs> we actually have a question from reddit that kind of feeds into that it's not it well we can answer it it's not directly related to pixel art in a way but it's just why are there so many dogs and cats <laughs> Uh, cats? I think oh yeah, cats. We have the cats. actual question is, let me find it. It was like a specific number. It's like, why are there so many canines and felines? There are 13 cat and 21 dog units in this game. That's enough 21? for me to make an all dog Vanar deck and a cat themed Songhai deck. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Lionar is is Lionar, so you gotta have yeah. a lot of lions. <laughs> oh yeah. It'd be weird if they had a bunch of like uh like platypus things and like <laughs> giraffes and lion art just wouldn't wouldn't make sense or me or maybe it will make sense we'll see you never know <laughs> look at this lion art unit it's an octopus right that's i tab over to the design document and i'm like lion art unit that is an octopus and then clobber gets and goes oh man <laughs> this doesn't make any sense uh, well uh well lion art is a lion art and uh, i think uh, Venner first. Uh, the Venner theme is like uh, forest animals, which are not lions. <laughs> and uh, so we, we got a bunch of wolves because uh, I think wolves. I like a lot of wolves, but uh, I think if it, it is the 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 Venner Venner crest, right? So we gotta need some wolves on the on the faction. Absolutely. But, uh, absolutely. Uh, we try to 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 add like a bears and uh, there's a deer, and a uh, and a beetle. It's a beetle. <laughs> it's a beetle looking the wrong way. <laughs> yeah. But then yeah, we have a bunch of dogs like uh, the 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 ghost the ghost one. I don't remember name. Sorry. Uh, the ghost, oh, ghost not ghost links, ghost. not ghost links, oh, but ghost the, 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 uh, the the one, one that spawns from Fenrir. Yeah, from Fenrir and. Uh, the one, the fox from transformation thing, yeah. And, uh, Sleep Dasher kind of looks like a dog. He's like a bear. Yeah, uh, it's it's yeah, it's not a dog. It's it's nothing. It's <laughs> it's <laughs> it's, it's a, yeah, it's a dream I had. <laughs> it's a dream. <laughs> <laughs> I think another good question. So I'm seeing people. I you know people are now like, oh my god, maybe we'll get a giraffe or a platypus. <laughs> so obviously you say anything, and everyone blows it out of proportion. Uh, but I think that kind of feeds into the thought of there are a lot of things people want to see in the game, and a lot of people have taken it uh, in their own hands and have made skins for characters or uh, messed around with colors, done recolors, and uploaded their own personal like versions of the art. What what do you guys thought? Like, how does that make you feel? Like, I mean, what? How do you feel about custom art, custom skins? I know Globber. I know you have done some like fan mockups as well. Maybe we could talk a little bit about that. Did I? Uh, well, the Mega Man. So, yeah, the, oh, the Mega Man yeah, on right, Seven, right? Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I think it's 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 awesome. It's awesome. I think I I, I love uh, any uh, related. Well, not any. Related community uh, addition like uh, mods or fan art. I say not any because there's some. I know there's some nasty stuff, naughty stuff <laughs> <laughs> online already. But <laughs> it's okay. It's uh, it's it's fun appreciation, you know. So uh, if they want to like modify the game uh, to look like something they like, like uh, let's say, oh, I want to, I want Song Guy to be all black because uh, they're ninjas and stuff. That's that's cool. That's that's a uh, Nice because um, they're making the game uh, better for them somehow, you know. So I really uh, uh, encourage people to to do this kind of stuff, and I, I and it's it's really uh, cool to see them do do that by themselves, you know. Like uh, I want 
this to to have different colors or a different skin so uh, uh, I, I would just do it you know it's it's awesome yeah uh, I I love it whenever I see um, like animations that are like inspired by duelist um, it's really cool to see that like other people are sort of like taking the animations that we make and learning from them uh, I see a, I've seen a few on uh, pixel joint like post up also I can sort of tell because I've looked at globbers colors for so long two and a half years <laughs> or something I can just notice whenever it, uh, characters are using like duelist palettes or something like that i was like oh they're looking at duelist sprites <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah, i think that's awesome yeah that dark blue right <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh my god the, the duelist blue yeah the duelist blue <laughs> you have to trademark it <laughs> i i think uh as far as custom skins go i my personal favorite is just all of the fan art of different minions but also as serpenti that's just like uh, i can't get enough of that you can if you have any more of those i mean i'm always i always see them all the time they're all over everywhere and they're just the oh, best you can see that there's serpenti right there on the stream yeah. Brown. <laughs> <laughs> the secret serpenti oh my god <laughs> Uh, that was also cool because somewhere in there you answered another question that I wasn't going to call out directly about specific types of fan art. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Another good question is when you do uh, this one's for Globber. When you do well, I guess we can. This can be for both of you in a, in a slightly different way. But when you do look for references for like other cool things to either base uh, animations on or like the, the aesthetic look on where where do you go to look for inspiration? Um, I <clears throat> I usually have like a folder for uh, things I bump into the internet, like really uh, different stuff, like unique or something that inspires me somehow. Even like the colors, you know, like it doesn't not specifically like the the aesthetics or the looks or or uh, the silhouette, you know, the pose. But sometimes just the colors are, are enough to like have something spark on my mind. So I have this folder, and also I look a lot on uh, Pinterest uh, because that's somehow uh, that's like people doing filters already, like filtering stuff uh, for you, which, which is already there. So it's it's pretty easy to find uh, cool and uh, really uh, you know underrated or underground stuff like stuff you you wouldn't find just by googling it or in other galleries you know i usually i usually go to the chinese version of uh pinterest which which is called i don't know how to uh, uh, spell it but it's um how to pronounce it but it's huaban like h u a b a n and uh it's really different like the, it has mostly um Asian from from Asian artists stuff, so uh, it's really different from uh, Pinterest, which is more Western, I think. So uh, it's also cool to look there, even though there's uh, a bunch of uh, anime, just anime there. <laughs> Sometimes I can find some some uh, unique stuff I wouldn't find on Pinterest. So I use both to to gather all the references I need to to create one character. Yeah, uh, for me, I use, uh, I take a lot of pictures or f videos of myself. I have a weird amount of videos of myself doing like coolest moves. Like, <laughs> there's, that, that doesn't uh, sound weird at all. That sounds awesome. <laughs> Will you be uh, uploading yeah, like, these somewhere where we can enjoy them? <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. Um, there's one. <laughs> Not that, at all. Uh, <laughs> there's one for like Mogwai, uh, how he has that glance. I wanted to have him spin it around, but I didn't know how exactly it would work, like how the lance like turns and stuff like that. So I got a pole stick and I uh, swung it around and took videos of myself swinging a pole stick, um, <laughs> and then just like screen capped it and copied my like ang like the angles of my body and that sort of thing. Uh, 
and it made it a million times easier just to figure out like how it actually works. So that's probably the most useful uh, tool that I use. Yeah, when I when I was in a meeting by myself, uh, I'm not sure if if everyone knows like before Kickstarter, uh, and even a bit uh, some time after Kickstarter, it was just me. Uh, we uh, we had Adam and all the other guys later because it was too much work for me. But um, when I uh, was animating alone, when I had to animate a Lilith's attack, it was really really difficult to to get like just just by drawing. So I had to to do Lilith's move like in real life <laughs> capture and even the pose, you know. <laughs> I had to be Lilith for one day. <laughs> And he dressed and that was and awesome and because and she's yeah, my yeah, favorite general. Yeah. <laughs> she's my favorite you're, general. So you're gonna become awesome. a general and, and feel yeah. very powerful. Yes, yes. Well, we definitely we definitely need to talk to uh, talk to the team about getting together a like 50 Adam Kling poses in 50 seconds style animation. <laughs> <laughs> One of those YouTube videos we have showcasing our awesome animations, but with uh, Adam Kling <laughs> videos. Oh, <no. laughs> So a lot of people are asking about uh, they themselves like to do pixel art just for fun, and they want to they want to get better at it. They want to practice. So what's what's a good what's a good tool to start with? Since I think both of you kind of outlined the pros and cons of the tools you use, what's a good tool for them to start with, and what's a good way for them to practice and get better? Um, Make more pixel art in the world. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's that's a good tip. <laughs> <laughs> just just do it, you know. <laughs> but uh, I think the a nice tool to to begin. It's uh, I don't think if if anyone uses it on team, I think probably Ryan, uh, a sprite, uh, A S E. Yeah, Ryan right. Does use it. Yeah, and uh, it's it's really it's really used uh, really easy to use, and uh, and it's made uh, by one of the, in my opinion, one of the best pixel artists uh, out there alive, and uh, it's so so it has it's really focused on on uh, on pixel art process, and it's constantly being being updated. So it and and the creator accepts a lot of feedback. So like, oh, if it would be cool to have like this, uh, like rotate stuff and not distort your your pixels too much. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna do that, try to do that. And uh, and I think it's pretty it's pretty accessible. I don't remember the, the, the price in dollars because I, I bought it on it's, it's pretty affordable. Yeah, I think it's I think it's about 20. Yeah, I think it's the one of the most affordable. I, there, there are like free tools, but this this one is really, really reliable, and it's it's uh, getting updated constantly, so it's gonna get better uh, as time goes on. So uh, I really recommend trying a sprite. There's a there's a trial to uh, a version. Uh, it's it's not trial. It's, it's a it's a demo. Like you can just use that. I think. Uh, you probably can't save like animated GIFs, but uh, you can still like test it indefinitely. And uh, well, I don't know career wise. Career wise, I think if you go to pixel art communities, like any of it, uh, I really recommend Pixelation and Pixel Joint to get uh, you know feedback for your work and and uh, and look and also look into other people's work to, to learn how they do it. They, they have like even uh, a portion of interviews from the, the most famous pixel artists on, on their communities. And um, and I think uh, gather, gathering a lot of references, like, like I said, like I used to uh, save a lot of uh, uh, stuff from, from other games and look into them to, to learn their tricks. You know, and to try to not copy, but try to to use the same solution when that uh, that they use, you know, and uh, the same kind of uh, effect they 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 were, they were trying to do, you know, because uh, uh, these these games they already have the solution there. You know, you just have to to look at they have they already have the answer, so uh, it's there for you to to study, you know. 
Including Duelist, you can use Duelist. Including Duelist, yeah, you, you can uh, go into the uh, PNG files folder and uh, just look into them. Or even yeah, uh, the, the deck builders have uh, all the animations, right? For, the, uh, for the database, the, the database has all the animations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. So. so look into it. Um, I would say pretty much the same as Globber. Uh, if you really want to like get into pixel art, you should join a pixel art community, pixel joiner, pixelation. Um, you can learn a lot from there. The other thing is uh, that I think is helpful is if you're just starting a pixel art and you don't know that much about it, it's helpful to um, like take a screenshot of Mega Man or something and then draw a, your own character on top of it and try to make it fit into the game and match their style. Uh, that way you can like learn the technique of pixel art and have a reference right next to you of what the other uh, artist did. And I think you can learn a lot faster that way. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and again, I think it all comes back to, those are all great points, but it all comes back to what Glauber said first, which is just just start doing it. Uh, if, you, if you start making just pixel art, do it. Exactly. That's that's the best way. Is uh, yeah, you'll get a, you'll get practice. You'll make cool pixel art. There's there's literally no downside. <laughs> yeah. And you'll get better, which kind of ties into this next question. What or uh, how do you think you've obviously improved since starting at Duelist, but even before then, in just the pixel art you've done over the years. So the question is about how. How do you feel, or talk a little bit about your growth, but also do you think we'll revisit some of the older minions and maybe like amp them up? Um, I'm, I don't think we will we'll do it, but uh, I kind of wanted to because uh, there's, there's some stuff that uh, as an artist, like there's going to be a lot of stuff that bothers you because uh, if you had like if you had more time to do it or if you have more resources or when you look at old stuff if you had more experience at the time to do differently you know so you always want to change stuff but uh, it's it's not like healthy to do that because i think it's it's cool to see like uh, the the progress in there even though it's a uh, uh even though duelis is a let's say it's a finish it Um, what was the, is, is that the end of your answer, Glover? Is it my turn? It's all it, but it's your, your, your progress. And, uh, but it's, that there's definitely things that I would change, like, uh, uh, units, they, they keep getting bigger and bigger, you know? So, uh, let's say for Silver Guard Knight, he was already big at the time, but if you look at all the Duelist units now, like, they're all kind of that size so Silver Guard Knight doesn't feel that big anymore. Like even Iron Cliff Guard, even though he has this massive silhouette, like massive shoulders and big arms and small legs and small head, you know, and um that doesn't feel like um like exactly right if you put it near like uh, Scintilla. Which is just a a girl, just a girl uh, with a uh, uh, without armor, but she's like even taller than Silver Knight, so Silver Guard Knight. So uh, it does look a bit strange, but I don't want to, but I want to keep it that way too. You know, like it's it's complicated because uh, uh, like you, you get the feeling that Silver Guard Knight and all these units from uh, the 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 core set, they're the core set, so they. The uh, and the new like legendary cards or epic cards, they gotta look awesome because they 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 need to look like uh, like a prize too, you know, like oh I got I got I don't know like I uh, one of the new legendaries um, that that are uh, re really used like right a now. Like, like very X, yeah, very X. She's she's pretty awesome, and she's like tall and big, a lot of arms. She's got to look like a, a really a nice reward, you know. Like a, that's a legendary card, you know. And Super Guard Knight is it's 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 a it's a basic one. Like 
the fear furious wraithlings they're supposed to be like really really big versions of the 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 the, the wraithlings like they're they're five five for god's sake <laughs> so uh, but they are not yeah. that big because you can you can um they're part of the core set you know like the the, the vanilla uh version of duelist and they're expendable. Wraithlings are, are meant to die. That's what that's, yes. that's what they're best for. Yes. <laughs> Get that death fire crescendo growing. Exactly. <laughs> oh man. Uh, what what was the uh, the question again? The question was uh, just talk a little bit about like your growth as an artist, and then also, do you think we'll revisit um, old? art slash animation, which I think I think Glober mostly answered that second part. So a little yeah. bit about just like, how do you feel you've grown as an artist since starting at Duelist? Yeah, um, if I had to retry out for Duelist at, uh, um, like, if I was trying to get in onto the art team with my skills that I get got into the art team at the beginning, I would not make it just because of how much, like, everybody on the team has learned about animation and and uh, sprite design and stuff like that. I like I was not ready for it two years ago. Um, this was my f oh wait, this isn't the right one. But anyway, this is an alternate Silver Guard Knight animation. This is one of my first ones. The this is the first character I ever did. Um, and like this was challenging for me to do at that time. And now I like that's the attacks are just like so much more complex than they used to be. Like this guy sticking his hands through the ground and wiggly arms come out. Um, no noodle arms, like, even. Yeah. Serpenty <laughs> arms. Yeah, serpenty exactly. arms. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so I think everyone has grown so much. Uh, one of the main um, like noticeable growths is uh, at what the character, the 4-3 uh, Mind Warper, is that the one that steals a spell? Yes, yes, yes. The yeah, one yeah. with the flame head. Yeah, that character was the first one that I realized, like, I can change the angle that you see. <laughs> the like, like here with this ghost guy, you can see his back. Um, whenever I was doing these animations, I didn't want to ruin Glover's designs. And I was like, I, don't, I can't mess it up. I got to keep it so it's always the same. But the animation really suffers if you don't mess up the design and change it uh, to suit whatever you're doing. Um, so like, that's it's one of the main too, it's too beautiful to change. Yeah, yeah. Really. <laughs> I didn't want to mess up his his pixel art. And then, it, and then it turns out, as long as you keep the idea of it and then change it, that's beautiful too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, you know, uh, Mind Warper was the first sign because uh, I think that in terms of where you started at and where you're here now, I think Adam, in my opinion, was the one that uh, most uh, evolved. Like. We could feel like he's, uh, he was not like on his uh, safe zone there because Julius was, was really like high uh, standards. But uh, he, he was the one that, that he, in my opinion, had evolved the most. And uh, you could see like um, Mind Warper was the first one that I, that I looked into and, and, and thought, oh, guy, oh, my God, he, he got it. Now he's got it. He, <laughs> he, he, he really, he really got the idea. Like now, he, now he's doing it. Now he's in the game. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Uh, that's yeah. that's a very cool moment to share. That both of you have this moment where you know the unit where you really felt like you got it here. That you both feel that way. It's like not only is mine does mind warper give you a spell but it's also a cool piece of duelist history yeah and, and to be fair to be fair like everyone had this uh i felt that everyone had this moment like uh for me there was the the solarius moment but I, every animator who's been working with us since the start like adam and nate and Raphael, they always they they all had like the the this one unit they overdid themselves and i thought that's the new standard for them I know I can uh, I can like get even harder units to animate. <laughs> <laughs> so you made more work for yourself. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> yeah. that 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 uh, also makes uh, that also gives freedom to me like to to do more complex stuff, you know, because I know they can handle it. 
So uh, that's more space for me to create and get more creative units. So everyone wins. <laughs> Especially the players. Especially the players. <laughs> So I th I've seen this question in chat, but I've also just heard it before. Um, and it really, it's a one word question. Dragons? Are we gonna, are we gonna have more dragons? Mm, are we? How many dragons do we have? Oh, we have one more. Yes. Yeah. It's been teased already. Did we? Did I animate? Yeah, the, the you animated. <laughs> I don't think we teased that one. We showed it. We showed it on Twitter, I think. Uh, the little one. I don't remember seeing that on Twitter, but maybe. Should I show it now or? No, 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 no. let's see. Let me check. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm uh, on Twitter right now, just to make sure. Yeah, because uh, dragons. Uh, it's always cool to do dragons, but it's also uh, difficult to not. Uh, falling to most of the cliches because there are so many dragons out there, so it's yeah. really difficult to be <clears throat> to be creative with them. That's why uh, magmar are dinosaurs <laughs> <laughs> because dinosaurs are not dragons. Can no. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we showed it. We yeah, show it. I, I'm not seeing it, so I'm not sure it popped up. Probably on, on Reddit, but uh, not on Twitter. So no, don't show it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> there, there are more dragons in the world, sort of alluded to by cards like uh, Dragon Bone Golem, which, which uh, oh, yeah. you know, presumably is made of dragon bones. So they're in the world and they will exist. But in general, Duelist tries to stay away from doing the standard like fantasy tropes. Or I guess a better way to think about it is... Uh, Keith has this vision at, at one level where he he wants Duelist to be its unique world, and that's that's mostly controlled with like the lore, but also when when he sort of has an idea that he like formulates an idea to pass along to Globber, it's very it's very much like you know this is its unique thing, like this isn't this isn't a horse or uh, something like that, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like when I first uh, was introduced to to Duelist by Keith, the whole idea was to get like. Okay, we're gonna do. There's gonna be a faction which are basically knights, medieval knights, but uh, with a twist. They always have like it, it's something with a twist. Like some guys gonna be ninjas and samurais with a twist, you know. And uh, that's what got me into it. Like, okay, I, I got to be creative. <laughs> I'm not gonna be like doing standard stuff, you know. Yeah, at one point uh, we were tr trying to get Undyne from Undertale to be like an alternate skin general, yeah. but it didn't, it didn't go through. And I'm sort of glad it did because uh, Duelist has such a specific um, like world that it is that I don't know if it would have fit. Yeah, well, we, was... we have dog, <laughs> dog yeah, high. We, we do we have dog high. <laughs> I would say we have some other units too where, uh, like especially the Kickstarter units I think are a great example where uh, Glaber did an awesome job translating these ideas into something that feels like it fits it fits in Duelist, but it does feel a little bit like it came from another world, right? Like when you see like Captain Hank Hart, it's sort of like, wait, why why is he here? You know? So this little <laughs> yeah. rabbit in a bubble and a guy in a spacesuit. It feels otherworldly while still feeling like it belongs on the battlefield. So mm -hmm. that that's kind of what would happen with, with more fan skins as well. Yeah. Like that's that's how Undyne would feel, right? You'd see her and go, you know, oh, it looks yeah, cool, but yeah, but from yeah. another world. Yeah, right. we had to to like do some changes, like like we did with um, Keepler's units, the uh, Shiro Puppy Dragon. Shiro, yeah, yeah, because the reference was the Shiro Shiro Puppy Dragon, like from one of his uh, fan arts, I think. Oh, it was a, a gift for a wedding gift, right? And uh, so we had to add some details, so it's not just you know, dog high, dog, sorry, dog high. It's not like uh, puppy dragon, like the usual, you know. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, with that, that's one of the units. One of the things I learned through Duelist is uh, like common tropes of fantasy don't make sense whenever you're, like whenever you apply them to like real world stuff. Um, like animating someone with two arms on their back 
doesn't actually help them because their reach is shorter than their normal arms. So there's no reason for them to use like Vindicator. I had a problem where like the two arms didn't reach as far as his one arm that was on his shoulder. So there was no reason for him to actually use his back arms. But like I, he just had to use them anyway because they were there, you know. Um, and Shiro yeah. Puppy Dragon was like, it's really awkward for the dog to attack with its tail. It has to like spin around. So it's not actually like practical that that would work. But that's I mean, that's why it's fantasy. But I never realized that before animating those uh, characters. It's it's the fine line between the more something's grouted in reality, like the reason you use reference photos and videos is because that creates like some sort of realism that helps you buy into it. But there's also some element of just like nonsense going on as well. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like why would this thing ever have this many arms? You're like, so it can hold one more sword, but not two more swords, you know, like, because yeah. it's cool. <laughs> it's really the real answer there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, another question we have that's kind of, <laughs> Kind of more for the artists and a little bit less about Duelist, but uh, do you have a favorite Pokemon? And if so... Yes, yes, I have. <laughs> okay, and was, the, the follow-up is just, uh, is there a way that could be reflected in Duelist? Or like, do you think about that when you make yes, characters? Yes, yes. Oh, okay, what a, what a great question. All right, let's 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 hear it. <laughs> well, you can, you can, uh, you can see that... Um, Oh God, I forgot the, the the unit's name. I'm gonna pull up the name. Is it? You can uh, you can ask me right then. No, it's also Skywing. It's it's <laughs> that's Logia, you know. <laughs> but that's not my favorite one. That's not my favorite one. My favorite one is uh, is Lucario. Oh, and, is it? Uh, yeah. And you can see on uh, what's the name? Yes, Frostiva. Oh, Frostiva fantastic! Is, is is like it's Lucario, but Fenner, you know. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, I, I've never thought of Frostiva that way, but I totally will now. Do do we get a do we get a Mega Frostiva or like a baby form <laughs> oh, Frostiva? Oh man, <laughs> we should have one. <laughs> but yeah, that uh, I think from what I can remember, Frostiva and Skywing. Are uh, based on on Pokemon, but I, I I do have like, well, Charizard is one of my favorites, but I'm not gonna do Charizard because he's literally a dragon. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the dragon thing. Yeah, I, you could say like Zorel is is Charizard, but it, it's not. Yeah, uh, I haven't played Pokemon very much. I only played the blue Pokemon Blue. <laughs> and I like. Uh, uh, Nidor Nidorino, Nidorino, the evolved two of Nidoran. Yeah, and that's, that's mostly very because, specific. Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, I like the uh, card art for like the Pokemon cards, a uh, collectible card game. Uh, I really like the Nidorino, the male one. I think I don't remember. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's a it's a Nidoran male, and it turns into a Nidorino. Yeah, yeah, I really like the card art for that one. So that's that's my favorite Pokemon. I don't think that's going to show up in the animation, so. <laughs> it might, though. Now now the Globber knows. He might have that <laughs> in the back of his mind as he's looking at some of these. Yeah. <laughs> and I think with that question, I think we, it looks like we answered not everyone's questions, of course, that's always impossible, but it looks like we've answered most of the questions here today. So I want to just take a, take a minute and thank everyone for coming out to our stream. Thanks to Globber and Adam for showing up and uh, answering some questions, giving you guys the inside scoop of some, some Duelist artwork, including showing off some cool stuff. Uh, we got to thank uh, La Tigris for saving us, saving us and putting this all together. And uh, there are plenty of other people to thank too, but uh, we're, we're going to wrap up on that. Any, any parting words, you two? Any last thing you want to say to the people here? Um... Well, thanks everyone for uh, I th uh, the the art dev talk is something that um, people wanted like from long ago, even in the old days from the round tables, you know. So, uh, so thanks for the interest. Like uh, I always like to share this stuff. Like there's so much going on on the on the 
backstage of the art process that I'd like to share, like stuff that I couldn't uh, tell because we know time. But um, I'm always like uh, interested to, to show this part because I, uh, it's, it's, uh, I like to share with especially players so they know uh, how much effort we, we do like we put into the game, you know, not only art, but all everything, you know, so it's always cool to do these. And uh, yeah, thanks. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, thanks everyone for watching. I uh, had something I was going to say, and now I don't remember. <laughs> so, <laughs> oops. Uh, yeah, I can't remember, but um, if you if you guys want to play, with me on duelist uh you can add me adam kling 524 i'm really bad so <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> if you me. if you want to play with me yeah. so it's it's yeah. in seven it's in seven and i just play turbo variax sorry <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but, if you want to play against me you have to find me on ladder i'm hiding <laughs> <can't do> it, <laughs> all right i think uh with that we are going to close up this dev talk. So again, thanks everyone for showing up and uh, we will catch you later.